okay. Yeah, we're now operating. Share the screen again. Here we go. Right. And the call button should still be buzzing somewhere. Okay. So, yeah, the tiles now. There's no, you notice that there's no indication that they are uh, arranged in any weak um, format. There's no, nothing, no requirements as such. Um, for the purposes of this uh, Moodle time, uh, Zoom time, I'll put on editing, which enables me to scroll through the content. So the first piece you will come to is uh, the front end. That's the subject outline, which I'd love you to have with you as, as your definitive document. What's on Moodle is an application of that. That is, um, that contains a list of the content. It contains all the assignments and the rubrics if they're there. Um, it, under useful resources, these are general. Um, and for newbies kicking off, I recommend to you uh, this French film, Etre et Avoir, and Manon, who's French, um, I hope will be enthusiastic about this, um, as I am. It's a, a story of a one teacher school in central France, uh, primary school, but there are principles that apply to secondary as well. Um, if you've got family around you, it's a great thing to do to, I would suggest, connecting your studies with other people um, to watch that. If you don't speak French, I don't think it matters one bit um, because you can get what's going on by the action. Um, that's but interrupt me um, with short uh, quickies if you wish. Otherwise, I'll just go through a few stuff and then we'll have uh, some answers, questions and answers. In here, you'll find a bunch of uh, Zoom recordings from the past and I'll put today's in here and on the 101 as well, so that you can um, review what we've talked about. Uh, I really strongly suggest you keep a journal uh, if you don't already and keep it for all your subjects and you can reference that in assignments as long as you've got page numbers and dates. It's something I really recommend you do. If you're into, here we are, this is 20% uh, for bachelor, 10% for uh, masters. Um, these, you'll notice that this forum was technically due uh, last Sunday. I can change the dates and I will. Um, I always keep the window open a week after it's due uh, because people have stuff that comes up. The idea is to work your way. This is the only thing that is weekly. Work your way through these readings and make a little comment of a few hundred words, responses, um, does it say how many words? It's a paragraph basically I'm after three or four lines. There's 150 in the um, outline. He, who said that? Uh, Chris. 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 I, think it, I, think, I think in the, in the, the PDF outline that you sent us it says 150. Okay, um, cool. It's not critical, I've never bothered measuring. Um, if, you, if you write a whole page, I'll maybe write a rude comment back to you saying, don't be silly, you're wasting too much time. Um, the idea is to be short and sweet and um, <laughs> grab the main things that have hit you by these readings. So the first one is the hardest to grasp um, uh, with grammar, with, with the use of English, because it's been translated from, Jap uh, not Japanese, from Spanish or Portuguese, I can't remember which. Um, it's, oh, oh yes, yeah, Spanish, I think. It's uh, a really, really great reading, but it is the hardest to get your head around, it's quite long. Uh, the rest are much more accessible. So get yourself into a routine of doing the, the forums once a week and by all means respond to other people. 
if you have a little read of what they've said and give them some encouragement or huh, how can you how can you have that perspective where did that come from um but don't be rude just be encouraging when you can and the minor essay that i find uh, is probably one of the best assignments i think in the whole of the degree because it gets you to look at education in australia so don't go quoting uk or america but education in australia over the last 80 um, years this when it was first written the question said the 60 years it's probably eight nearly 80 now since world war ii so basically we'll talk about that anon um what's happened to education since world war ii and you pop your um, assignment in there with a the cover sheet the major assignment and notice that's due the beginning of june this one here is due end of june major where you write your philosophy of education and you critique various approaches pedagogical approaches you've come across in your readings throughout the term you obviously won't like all of them but i hope you'll like some and you'll be able to say yay i definitely want to put that into my um, toolkit whereas i don't want to touch that approach it would drive me around the bend uh, but you can't just say it like that. You've got to justify why you're coming to the conclusions you are. Now, that's all about um, assignments, etc. Uh, that's a philosophy of Christian education, mine, that I wrote in 2010. Um, I don't want in any shape or form for you to copy it, but that's, for an example, the sort of things you might put into a philosophy statement. The content really for this whole course, which you're going to have to drive yourselves, guys, without um, an intensive, are these four PowerPoints. So if you work through them, ask yourself as you see each slide, is this something I, I need to explore? In which case, go and explore it. If it's not, move on. It's uh, not a case you're ever going to be tested on the content of that. Although I'm hoping this is going to be a prompt for key ideas that will speak to the assignment. So it's those four. The rest are of interest, should you wish to go there. Now, I need to explain um, Jenny Bickmore Brand, who was my predecessor at Alpha Crucis. She got the initial course accredited and she based it on her own PhD studies. Her studies basically broke education into seven um, contexts, seven categories, which you can argue about it, you can agree or disagree, but they're useful. I'm not saying you have to agree with this sevenfold division of education. It's just a convenience which I've chosen to use for the content of this course. So her number one is the context of education. And there you've got a bunch of resources that you can um, sample if you want to explore the whole topic of context. And then you go into the kids' interest. And there's again a bunch of resources that um, I hope you'll find inspiring and helpful in the interest Heading, um, modeling, you set out to not just be a teacher with voice, but you, your whole life is a model to your students. So that's what that's about. I'm a huge fan of Parker J. Palmer um, and his philosophy, if you like, of, of teaching and learning. Very big fan. Um, I love what he does. Scaffolding, every teacher needs to scaffold their work for their kids. So that's what that's about. And you need something for kids to stand on while they're working. Otherwise, they will not know the context. Uh, metacognition, uh, thinking about thinking, 
and the why of education and uh, teaching and learning. Uh, responsibility. Uh, I get really frustrated when the government comes up with yet another philosophy that, or a principle that they tell teachers that they have to do as if they're the custodians of everything. Uh, they seem to be the kicking boy of, of society. Community resources. Um, so what you're doing as a teacher, you're doing in the world. It's not, you're not in a hermit situation in isolation from the world. And in that context, I'm a huge fan of Etienne Benga, um, who was born the same year as me in uh, Switzerland. And I highly recommend anything you read on Etienne Benga. And at the end, you can do some feedback. That would be fantastic. Uh, or halfway through the term. So there's a huge amount on here and in no shape or form would I ever suggest you read or study all of it. It's the analogy I give is you're going through Woolies with a shopping cart and you're going up and down the aisles, uh, weaving your way, looking left and right um, and finding out what you need for your diet and what you need to pass by. Some will just not satisfy at all, It'll be a waste of your time, don't bother, don't feel bad, there's no has to, it's not a prescribed course. The only prescription in it, and such as it is, are my four PowerPoints. Enough of my overview, um, time for you to start having a chat with me. So I've, for now I'll just stop sharing so that I can see you a bit clearer. Okay, shoot. Comments, questions. Don't forget to unmute yourself if you want to ask something. When's the end date for this um, subject? Yeah, this year we're running in terms, and it's a trial um, in both senses of the word, actually. Uh, I hope we don't do it next year. Uh, but it is um, it is terms for now, and therefore technically term two started twenty seventh of April, finishes third of July, and then term three starts two weeks after that. Um, so when you come to enrolling in semester two subjects, you're actually enrolling in term three and four at the same time, and I'll be getting on at you to do that late May. But we don't need to think about that for now. So yes, some subjects are timetable for particular terms. Um, this this one here we put on now 401 is for uh, newbies coming in in the April intake, which is um, we've never done it before. Um, so that's why we have terms. And does that answer your question, Victoria? Thank you. All right. Anything else about anything? I know it's a long way away, but for the final assignment, um, would you recommend any resources to to better grasp the concept of what we have to write, because that's one of the things I struggled with last time is I've never written um, a philosophy of education or Christian education before, and I find it a bit daunting to just get started. How would you, what would your advice be about that? Yeah, uh, thank you, Manon, that's a great question. Um, when we've been, We've taken this course for accreditation uh, with BOSTES before and now NESA. Um, I remember a few years ago, the panel who were reviewing our course saw this question and thought, what? What? You're getting 
people in their first semester to write a philosophy of education. Um, they were horrified. Um, anyway, we pushed back and said, look, I mean, it's my philosophy, if you like, that you, to become great teachers, you're not just stacking up a whole swag of techniques, skills, resources, although you do. Um, you've got to know why. And it's got to be authentic. It's got to be related to your worldview. Um, my feeling is, you, you know, you're not just going off and to be an apprentice and learn how to become a carpenter and work with wood, which is inanimate. It's out there. It's not you. Yes, you have to have impeccable motor skills to do that, but it, you can go home and you're, you're you. Whereas if you're a teacher, you are you're a teacher 24 seven, you know, it's just your being. And even people will see you in a party when we're allowed to have them. Um, and they'll be able to look at you and say, hmm, I bet you're a teacher. And what are they seeing when they see that you're a teacher? There's something about you. Now, the challenge is to try and articulate how your being is a teacher, how, how you view, and it'll be rough, and it'll be ropey, it'll be vague, and you'll change it, and you'll be fed up with it, and you won't want it ever to see again. you want to rewrite it the next year. Of course, the whole idea is it's dynamic. It's never, never static. I mean, if I were to write a new one today, I couldn't do it in a day anyway. If I were to write a new one this year, it would be different from what I've written before. So just try to connect your, your worldview, your reason for being with why it is you're teaching. My, my, re, my rationale is that if you, don't, if you can't make that connection, you won't have the resilience to survive a career in teaching because you, you, the, the cracks will appear and it will, the challenges will be too strong and you'll be, you'll be out for the count. So the only, now that's all a bit vague, but can I bring it down a bit? I think, I think that some people who try and write this philosophy are way out there. They're on, I'm being ridiculous now, the doctrine of the Trinity or something. And it's too spiritual. I'm often writing, this is too spiritual. You haven't got your feet on the ground. So try and bring your worldview, your philosophy into line with, what does that mean on Monday with year 10? You know, how do I react to dotty kids? that I don't naturally want to relate to, but actually it's my calling. Therefore, how am I going to do this thing? So, so there needs to be some, you know, have a look at my philosophy, read that carefully, tease it out. What are the things that Jim's on about? Um, I'm not saying that's, you haven't got to model it on that at all. For this one, I would think you maybe one or two references for key uh, writers, the theoreticians, uh, maybe a scripture verse one um, that is key to your life. Um, and then um, the bigger reference list will be part two, where you take uh, Bruner or you take uh, Vygotsky, you take these key thinkers and you wrestle with them, are they going to be part of your life? If so, why? Or are you going to reject them? If so, why? So roughly you have two parts to part two, um, a rationale for why you like certain approaches and a rationale for why you don't like others. And there's no, I'm not saying for part two, you need to do, you know, six and six. You could do two in great detail and three, two, in great detail for the rejections, or any number, 
you've just got to juggle up whether or not doing a lot, which obviously means you have to do a lot of research, is the payoff, or you do a few in detail, which might be more akin with your philosophy. Uh, you've, you've got to make that call yourself, and there's no right and wrong. Any help? Give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Yeah, but look, um, Manon, we, we will talk further about yeah. that. When you say it's a long way off, it's not. Yeah. It's, it's, it's less than two months. <clears throat> um, we haven't got long. It's yeah. a short term, and um, let's make it count, okay? Uh, Jim, um, uh, obviously I've not been on Moodle yet, but is there access to um, libraries, you know, broader than just the readings that are on the um, yeah on the on the when unit? you get Moodle access, you will get. Um, in fact, this will be helpful for everyone and also to record. So let me demo. When you go to Moodle. Uh, oh, sorry, I've got to share the screen. Oopsie daisy. Here we go, sharing screen. Um, when you get on Moodle, you will see this as your home page. And down the left will be the subjects that you're enrolled in, my courses. And down here, there's library information. So you hit that. And this opens up. Now, in there, there's a whole bunch of tabs. I've never used EBSCO books. I'm sure it's wonderful. I use EBSCO all the time. So hit EBSCO and then EBSCO host. And this has a humongous number of resources, uh, which the college pays for. We have this instead of textbooks. My philosophy is if we have a textbook, uh, it'll go out of date. It'll be, it'll be the lecturer's particular pet textbook. Um, whereas I would love you to be more broad in your approach. Therefore, uh, what we go for is uh, peer reviewed journals. So So if you go to Christian Education and search, and then you would hit full text, and you'd hit peer reviewed, and you would hit, say, um, 2001 to 2020, and why hasn't it? calibrated I'm not sure um, and then you can also select by country you can geography as in let's do Australia only it, this is a really brilliant tool and then you hit the PDF and you've got at a, a couple of clicks you've got the whole article okay and just quickly, thanks for showing that, Jim. Um, is it uh, Chicago referencing style? Or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, what did you say to me? Oh, <laughs> dear. You've hit a nail. Um, I'm very sorry, folks. It's APA 6. Australian, uh, sorry, American Psychology Association. Um, so basically, this is not APA6, this is an older one that you're looking at, it's probably too small for you to see. Um, but it's typically um, just the initials, it's indented second line, it's um, no capital letters apart from after the colon. Um, basically it's APA6, and when you do 405 or 105, that's, uh, we, we cross check on that and do your all, all your APA plagiarism stuff. So for all education subjects, I'm so sorry, it's gonna to have to be APA. 
well, that serves me right for doing three different subject areas because that's, that's now the third referencing system I'm going to have to learn. <laughs> oh, and if you're tempted to try and use some uh, referencing software, I really encourage you not to um, because I've never come across a referencing software that actually works correctly. So please try and do it manually, certainly for the first uh, semester and uh, get used to it. And then you'll know if it's made mistakes and you can correct it. I'm not saying never use it, but just initially don't bother, please. Okay. Jim, it's David. Do we, um, through that site, have access to whole texts? I mean, they're journals, but say if I wanted to look at Paolo Freire's Pedagogy of the Oppressed, is that there as a full text? I have never checked that. Um, I believe I've found the full text of that one actually online anyway, free. Okay, but, but generally, is there a portal that we have access to for full texts? Uh, you mean books? Um, yeah. I, as I say, I've never used the, uh, the EBSCO book one. But maybe that does. EBSCO books, ebooks. I, I I have used that at the ACU. Um, um, generally, you can get access to whole books. There, you can't necessarily download the whole book, but the, they have them separated into chapters, and you can download whatever you need to use. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Sorry, David. I don't know any further on that one thank you i'll i guess we'll have a play around with it when we get online yeah that's right okay anything else folks uh yes um i've never done a reflective journal before um do you have any places i can go to see what that should look like um because it says that in the outline it says we'll be asked to keep an observational journal as well in the future so I want to make sure I'm doing it properly now for when it is assessed later on. Sure. Um, I'm going to 401 again, and I'm dipping into, so you're referring to not the forum posts, you're talking about this non-assessed stuff, yes? That's right, yes. Yeah. Um, Oh, and up here at the top, I believe, there's a reference to yeah, observational um, visits. Yeah, no, not what I was thinking of. Um, there's no particular format. Ah, but thank you, Miffy. Uh, I will show you, as well as having access to your subjects, you you'll also get access to ed info, ed underscore info, which is a separate page from, from the subjects. But in here, there's a whole swag of material that's of general nature to all education students. Now, this book here, the Education Student Handbook, is absolutely crucial um, for every new student. You see, what I'm actually now doing in a space of five minutes is I'm going to have a chat with you about the contents of this, which is your induction. So when you get access to Moodle, get into EdInfo, get the Education Student Handbook in your um, sites I suggest you make a bookmark for it or something um, but there's a whole swag of material in here that will guide you um, in here there's sorry there's an another booklet as well which is called the professional the professional experience program plus clinical teaching model and in here, this one, there's a whole thing on 
on observational journals. So there's pages and pages of notes on what to look for, how to set it out, give you hints. It's in the Professional Experience Handbook, page 20 through to 30 or so. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, there's loads of material in there. No, that's not the bit that I'm thinking of. There is there's a much larger section in in here. But seriously, um, I would simply say uh, the powers of reflection and the powers of observation. So when you're in the context of a school again, um, you have to arrange uh, at least 10 days worth of visits to schools, uh, usually two days each. And they're something that you arrange yourself. They're the observational visits and you log those. They will then give you an opportunity to see loads of different styles of operation in action. And I'd encourage you to uh, practice your observational journals on the observational visits. Okay. So, also on EdInfo while I'm there, um, we have uh, the graduate, some, gra some of the graduates from last year um, and a whole bunch of general resources on, this, on these pages here from all sorts of professional development days. Okay, any, so did that answer your question? Do, it did, yes. How do I get on to EdInfo? I have that in one of my courses. Are you on Moodle yet? Yes, I am. Oh, fantastic. Um, I am a little nervous about that. Um, can I, can I get back to you? I can ask the Ling, who's uh, our teacher, absolutely. Student, um, she will get you all. I'll send her an email today with all you people, and make sure you're on EdInfo. Now that might take twenty-four hours, but we'll get there. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? We've we've lost the face of David, and we've lost. The body of Chris, but never mind a. Eh? Oh, there he is. Um, now, uh, so yes, so basically, actually, what would be helpful in lieu of you getting on that info is if I sent you PDFs of those two uh, handbooks by email, I will do that. I'll do the two handbooks. So we're not dependent on that. You can get reading those handbooks. And the other thing that I was thinking of was, there was another thing went through my head then. No, it's gone out, sorry. Um, no, over to you. Mine's Jim, gone. Yeah. Can we get the readings? Yeah. Thank you, Victoria. Um, if you're thinking my thoughts. Uh, so I'll go shutting off to here. Um, And in lieu of the late uh, Moodle access, I will certainly send you the free air one and the bear one. That will certainly keep you going. Those first two. That one is long, and the bare one, 
but it's the key one for your minor assignment. So I would, some people make a big mistake with the minor assignment, and that is they, they basically write a history um, of the last 60, 80 years. That isn't really what the essay is about. Um, it's now uh, 22. If, would it be helpful if I spent, say, 10 minutes on unpacking this minor now? Um, if you need to go, feel free to go. Otherwise, stick with me. Um, I will, not saying I won't do another session on the minor. Um, we will, and we'll obviously have more sessions on the major as well before that's due, way before that's due. But I think it might be nice, since I'm going to send you the bear, um, if we unpack that a bit. Is that okay? Ten minutes? Yes, please. Thank you. I'm just going to go. Thank you very much, Tim. No worries. See you later, Menon. Bye. Okay. So, the minor essay. Um, I love the title. It's been very carefully crafted in my view. Examine how... Jack, can you read that? Folks, can you all see that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, examine how schools and families in the Australian context changed their attitude towards children uh, since World War II. Now, to me, there are some very key words in that. Firstly, schools and families. So don't get hooked into just writing about schools. Think of schools and families as a as a whole, as a, uh, a societal element, if you will. And um, my view is that the more families can be integrated with what's happening in schools, the better. When families and schools become divorced, it's not so good for the kids' education. So it's really great in this essay if you can keep those together in your discussion. This word examine, um, I would translate that analyze, um, come up with scenarios or hypotheses that might give light to this question. It's not saying describe how schools and families in the Australian context. Not saying that at all, because Hedley Bear describes very well. So you can't read the Hedley Bear paper and say, oh yeah, page 200, I'll have that one. It's not going to work. So you have to, it has to be a cognitive process you do yourself. You have to examine how those entities have changed there. And I would argue the biggest word of all is their attitude. So it's tempting to write about the latest government reforms and the latest government grants and all that stuff and the politics of it all. Um, but is that a, a reflection of the schools and families attitudes? Which comes first? Is, it, is, it, is politics a reflection of society? Or both, both private society and all those debates? I'd love you to have a field day with this essay. Um, I, I tend to say to students, Think about what school was like in 1950s in Australia. Um, typically, you'd have kids in rows, and the mantra would be uh, kids are to be seen and not heard. And you basically did exactly what the teacher said. Um, think about the curriculum. The curriculum is highly compressed and a lot more. Um, straightforward than it is today. But today, think about the attitude of schools and families, and I'll let you chat for a minute in a minute when I shut up. What, why, how, why have 
attitude, why the schools and families got a different attitude towards kids today. What's happened in all these years? Something remarkable has happened and it's had huge impact on how children, when I say children, I tend to think of the word children as a primary school and students as high school, but for the purposes of this title, obviously children is both. And you write about the area that you're most going to be in contact with. So if you're high school, you do high school, primary, primary. So um, look, Prismi, any questions, comments about this question? David. Um, I, I think uh, culturally, one of the significant changes has actually been um, that uh, the home is less a place of education than it was in the past. Um, and so um, parents, uh, I think, far more increasingly um, think that they're, they're um, kind of dropping their kids off at school for all of the education to take place there. Whereas um, certainly from the Christian tradition that I come to, the, come from, the, the primary place of education is the home, just as the home is the primary place of the church. Uh, David, I would agree with you. When you're talking, I'm thinking about, we have a hub in Melbourne, uh, which is centered on a Jewish school, Orthodox Jewish community. And I was talking with um, one of their students two days ago. Um, I think he's got 11 children and they're in home isolation. Yeah. Um, it's, it's absolutely integral in their culture that uh, education is home-based. So what is it? What's happened? Now, that's an examination of the change that most Aussie families now do drop the kids off and expect the school to do their education. Uh, is that because the education has now become uh, so different from the parents' own education that they no longer can relate as well? But is that a, a reflection of the changing attitude or is it a changing attitude? I mean, it's hard to separate that from, um, you know, the technological revolution because access to information is completely different to it was even, you know, when I was at secondary school, um, certainly when I was at primary school. So, you know, whereas a focus used to be on sort of teaching, um, you know, facts or uh, recall knowledge or wherever it may be because that was important because you couldn't just punch it into your phone um, you know now that access is is ubiquitous um, and so you know being taught what to do with it is is is, is more is of more importance and actually that's a very different pedagogy to what parents were used to and so I think they just think it's out of their skill zone um, which I don't think it is uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm from the same tradition as, as David, as you can see. Um, uh, uh, but I think that's the difference is the technological revolution, uh, and that perhaps it is changing as as uh, as the yeah, age but, of parents, or the but, the, the but, year that parents were born changes. You know. I mean, if but I was to be provocative, I would say the vision for um, universal education. Uh, provided by a state safety net and other choices for those who want them, um, is a product of the Cam Communist Manifesto. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it, uh, it, it's Karl Marx who really enunciates the vision of statewide education um, Thanks to in, a so. in, a, in a context where um, uh, certainly Christian families understood um, the home as the primary place for church and education. Um, David, I'm going to look forward to your essay with great excitement. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a hoot. Thank you for that. Um, I, can I float another one? I mean, you're saying basically 
education is now driven by far left or is it the far right now i could be debatable but um what about in the 1950s i would argue that for australian context not that i was here but i'm presuming it its whole value system will be the judeo christian ethic etc and tradition and it was a given the whole of society was imbued with that and whether it was good or not is another discussion but i i think that drove the way which schools and families looked at children's education whereas today what about the multicultural agenda and the fact that you're not allowed to have um if you like national value systems although some may will want to try and maintain them and therefore everybody's got to have their own value system and peg it to whatever they want to peg it to it, it, um, jim is that on the subject of, of integration versus disintegration i mean you know the 1950s schooling system was still um recognizable for the origins of, of school education in, in the and i am only talking from a western point of view i, I appreciate this um you know that schools were a product of the church just as universities were you know the, the first universities sure. were monastic institutions the first schools were were basically parish churches or rectors or or, or local missions uh, of the church offering uh, schooling yep. for free to children yep. and there was this integration of you know church and and in england and, and i think although it was never established in australia there was this sense of an established type church and state um working together and that was that was integrated yeah. uh, and now in the, in, 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 we live in a very disintegrated world or a world that where people are seem to, seeming to want to disintegrate people yeah um you know following this rousseauian nightmare um you know so so is, is it about integration and disintegration maybe well um i'm not a, i'm not going to presume to answer um i haven't got an answer but i'm just thinking looking at you guys chris and david um you would have some uh direct knowledge of, of the catholic system um in australia a lot more than i would um i can speak about christian education the low fee type of school that i know from the 1990s uh up to, to today whereas you would know of the um more of the philosophies of of the catholic set up and their motivation for schooling which i think will be a very interesting or could be a very interesting scaffold for this for this essay if you wish to choose so to do so and um, look well, jim i think another i mean another uh, i'll just throw it out there i mean another hypothesis from what you're saying is um uh if you're uh, if you're kind of imagining the world in the 1950s in a kind of Christendom mindset where society at large, um, including schools, is expected to educate children uh, about faith as well, um, which, is, um, uh, which is not my tradition, but was a dominant tradition, I think, say, for the Anglican Church, um, where Anglican families expected the school to teach the faith to children. Um, one of the comparisons would be to say that actually when we get into more modern times, when culture actually rightly is not um, catechizing children, because it's not culture's responsibility to do that, it's the church's, um, the church just doesn't know how to do it anymore. So schools do it? Well, schools yeah. did do it. I, mean, my, I think my point is that, uh, you know, it, it, I'm just taking what you said, you know, uh, um, about a society which was dominantly Judeo-Christian. Um, uh, and school, I think churches probably got out of the practice of educating children because they thought the schools were doing it, teaching the Ten Commandments and the Lord's Prayer and those kinds of things. And now, um, because schools don't do it, rightly, rightly so in my view, I don't think 
It is part of a state system to educate people in Christianity. Um, uh, no one's doing it because the, the churches don't don't know how to educate society about Christianity because they thought society was doing it. Before. I mean, within, within the Catholic, and that, that's here. why I say, that's why I say you you know my my model would be the dominant place for education is always the family. Look, we could go on for hours, but um, I must move on. <laughs> um, look, looking at the question a bit more, lists here, you see, your essay should include these four themes. Now, frankly, I'm not going to be counting up one, two, three, four. Um, if you find your essay gets... Um, gets what it needs from three of them, cool. Uh, that doesn't mean to say you're going to lose 25% of your marks. So I'm asking you to take the word should with a little bit of a small s, a bit of a pinch of salt, okay? Now look at these four themes. Educational reforms, their influence on, for example, participation rates, classroom, behavior management. There's a whole load of stuff in here and you're not expected to unpack all of them. Look at them as exemplars to maybe illustrate the change or a particular change that you're trying to see. So they got values education, we've been talking about that. And the Safe Schools Program, Victoria, for example. Um, where's that come from? What's driving that? And uh, that might be a theme you want to explore. You. I encourage you to look at national curriculum and the state, if you're in Queensland or Victoria or New South Wales, if you're here, the state curricula versus the national. What's in those curricula compared to what was in them in the 1950s? What's happened and why might that be the case? And a comment or two on those lines might be helpful. Uh, if you've got a particular key learning area, high school teachers, that you want to use as an exemplar of how a subject has changed, do, and notice this phrase here, which you'll find in many subjects, Christian and alternate school contexts. That's for basically people to use as they wish, because we don't always have Christians on the course. We sometimes have um, Muslims, Hindus, and people of no faith. Specific Christian educators, which might support your opinions. Now, again, more, one or two. So those aspects are, if you like, scaffolding. Oh, I should mention this to you because you're a newbies. Um, that might look a little bit like Chinese. And anybody like to hazard a guess as to what we're talking about here? I uh, see. Are they, are they the unit codes? No. Oh, oh, no, they're learning outcomes, are they? They are Australian professional standards for teachers. Now, tell me if my website goes, if your, if your Google goes pear-shaped. I'm going to go and, as it, can you see your Google search now? No? No, I'll stop sharing and share again. I think you have to do that. Um, can you see? Google search, yes? Yeah. APSTs standards. This is a website I want you to become really familiar with, the Australian Professional Standards for Teachers. Now, every single assignment you do, well, you will see at the end of it a string of numbers. 1.1.1. One, One refers to graduate level. So you'll see on this particular page, all I've got is two digits, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, etc. and then we get into the twos. But if you were already teaching in school, then you'd be under the proficient level. And then once you've been there a few years, you go to the highly accomplished and then lead. So at the moment, all we have to worry about on this website is graduate level stuff which is 1.1.1, 1.2.1, etc. So these are the standards. So if you want to get your head around what does this essay 
asking for, then come to the Australian Professional Standards for Teachers and look up the numbers. And it's like a sort of a cross check, uh, a quality control check. Um, if you find yourself not hitting these APSTs, then you may not get the best of your answers. Okay. Look, it's um, 12. Can I sign off and we will meet again? Um, give me some indication as to how helpful this has been or otherwise. Pretty useful. I mean, I, I'm like a deer caught in the headlights at the moment because it's all new, but um, uh, that's quite interesting and uh, uh, gives me something to um, argue with my wife about as well because she's a board member of ATL. <laughs> 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 so if anyone wants to give any feedback, then throw it my way. Oh, we, we will be having some interesting conversations, Chris. Thanks, Jim. Really helpful. appreciate Thank it. You. Uh, as you know, I um, I spoke to the college for the first time about signing up yesterday, so this is all very new. Um, it's great, um, and I've actually um, I'm going to finish my job next week, so uh, I'll be able to do this. Um, Jim, um, when is the uh, what's the likely schedule for Zoom meetings? Uh, I would say ad hoc in this subject. Okay. Um, I, when we have them, I will always record them so that if you can't be there, you can always catch them after, but obviously not synchronously. Um, we'll see. My, for an online subject, this is an online subject, therefore doesn't have Zoom equivalents. It's, it's more or less ad hoc um, and certainly um, two weeks out from the major assignment or, or the minor assignment, we would have a session. Um, we will talk about ways and means of communicating. There are loads. Um, never use the messenger thing on Moodle uh, because I can't cope with that. That's my personal quirk. Um, so emails and phone calls when we're back in the office, etc. Uh, emails for now. If Anne, you were saying. Um, it's been very helpful. Thank you. I know where to start now and I feel like I'm not swimming in the ocean without a boat. Good so, on you. Yeah. Victoria? Thanks. It was good. It's okay. Helpful? Yeah. Thank okay. you. I'll get some emails coming to you all very shortly. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Jim. Have a great day. Now. Cheers. Bye. Bye.